Hi there, and welcome to this video on A-level biology for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of cells, and in particular, on the structure of prokaryotes and viruses. I'm Manisha from StudyMind, where we help you to revise A-level biology with our helpful video tutorials tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button. And whilst you're watching, feel free to leave any comments down below of anything you're unsure about, and let us know if it's your first time watching so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the specification. So, let's get started. Welcome to lesson three of nine in this tutorial, covering the structure of prokaryotes and viruses. This is our third video in the series of nine lessons on the topic of cell structure. In the last lesson, we learnt all about eukaryotic cells. Here are the key learning objectives for today's lesson. The first is to look at prokaryotes and eukaryotes and the second is to look at the structure of viruses. Here are the AQA specification points for this lesson. Feel free to pause the video now and have a quick read through them before we begin. The first point we will cover is about prokaryotic cells. Here we can see both a eukaryotic cell and a prokaryotic cell. Eukaryotes are usually unicellular or multicellular, whilst prokaryotes are all unicellular and much smaller than eukaryotes. Eukaryotes will contain many membrane-bound organelles. Prokaryotes have no membrane-bound organelles, including no nucleus, mitochondria, rough ER or smooth ER. As we've just said, eukaryotes will have a membrane-bound nucleus. In contrast to this, prokaryotes have no nucleus, but have a free-floating chromosome instead. Eukaryotes do not have a plasmid, whilst prokaryotes do. Again, both have ribosomes, but the ones in prokaryotes are always smaller. Both will also have a cell membrane. However, only some eukaryotes have a cell wall, whilst all of the prokaryotes will. This cell wall is made of peptidoglycan. Prokaryotes will have a capsule, whilst eukaryotes do not. The final difference is that all prokaryotes will have a flagella, whilst only some of the eukaryotes will. Let's fill in this table to recap the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. First, let's look at size. Eukaryotes are going to be unicellular or multicellular. Whilst prokaryotes are all unicellular. Next, we will look at the membrane-bound organelles. Eukaryotes will have many of these, whilst prokaryotes will have none. Now let's consider the nucleus. In eukaryotes, this is membrane-bound. Whilst in prokaryotes, there is no nucleus. It is just a free-floating chromosome. Next, we'll look at plasmids. There are no plasmids in eukaryotes. However, in prokaryotes, some will have them, in addition to a bacterial chromosome. 
Next up is the difference in ribosomes. In eukaryotes, they will be free-floating in the cytoplasm. In prokaryotes, they will be the same, but much smaller. Now we'll consider the cell surface membranes. This is present in a prokaryote and also present in eukaryotes. Similarly, we will look at cell walls. In eukaryotes, the cell wall in plants is made of cellulose and in fungi, it is made of chitin. Prokaryotes will have a cell wall as well, but it is made of murine. Now let's look at capsules. There are none in eukaryotes, but certain types of prokaryotes will. Finally, we'll consider motility. Eukaryotes, some of them will have cilia and flagella. Whereas in prokaryotes, most of them will have cilia or flagella. Now let's look at our next specification point, covering plasmids in prokaryotic cells. The plasmid DNA often carries genes which are essential for bacterial survival. Examples include the genes for antibiotic resistance and the genes that allow them to grow in particular environments. The capsule can protect pathogenic bacteria from the immune systems of the organisms they can invade. This helps them to evade the immune system and go undetected. Just memorise the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. You won't need more detail than what we've included in this video. Now let's look at viruses. Viruses are not living cells. Instead, they are biological structures which have a nucleic acid genome surrounded by protein and lipids. They have no cell organelles meaning that they don't have a nucleus, ribosomes, and none of the membrane-bound organelles. Viruses are even smaller than the smallest prokaryote, going into the nanometer range. Viruses carry genetic material. There are eight different types of genomes, of which each genome is made up of variations of DNA and RNA. They have a protein coat called a capsid. This protects the viral genome from the external environment. Some will have a lipid coat containing glycoproteins. Viruses will invade host cells and reproduce inside them. Before the host cell detects the virus as foreign and responds to it, the virus might have reproduced and spread. Viruses have attachment proteins on the surfaces of their capsids. The virus will use these to bind to the host cells and infect them. We've now covered all the specification points for this lesson. Feel free to skip back through the video and re-watch any of the sections you might be unsure about. We've now completed lesson three. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to subscribe by clicking down below and leaving a comment of the topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch the rest of our videos in our A-Level Biology series, or visit our website, studymind.co.uk, for past paper compilations by topic and specification.